Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about how to calculate and measure the resistance within our brushless motor. We're gonna be looking at the winding resistance, typically known as RM within our brushless motor. Now we're gonna set up a circuit in order to do that, and we're gonna actually be measuring everything but the resistance within that motor. Then we're gonna go and take our measurements that we make, and we're gonna go and compute and calculate the resistance that we get from our motor and our findings. First thing that I did want to cover is a couple safety aspects. Now there's a few things that I want to talk about. One of them being the resistor that we're going to be using. We're going to be using a resistor in the circuit that we build today and it is known as a power resistor. Power resistors uh, suggest to us that there's going to be a lot of power going through here potentially which means they get hot. So keep that in mind, make sure that the power resistor is in an area where if it does get hot to the touch that it is not going to burn something and especially your hands, you know, keep your hands away from this, it will get hot, especially if you are using it on a 4S pack. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention is the brushless motor that we're going to be testing. So we have a brushless motor here that's going to be tested. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, we are powering a circuit within the motor. You may experience or see the motor uh, move around and pop around. So keep that in mind, make sure all the electrical circuits are free from being touching one another and that sort of thing. Uh, there is motion that can happen within that brushless motor. The third item is we are using a lithium polymer battery pack. This is going to be wired in such a way where we are drawing power from it. In that case, what I would recommend is for you to take your lithium polymer battery pack and place it into a lipo safe bag in order to make sure that we are keeping this thing safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and stuff that into our lipo safe bag and I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and close it up and once it's closed up, we're, we are good for now. Okay, so now that we have an understanding, you know, how we're gonna keep everything safe, now we need to get an understanding of how we set up our circuit and what is required. So we'll go through what is required in order to do the test. Well, the first thing that we need is that LiPo that I just showed you. You need to have a lithium polymer battery anywhere from two to four cells. And if you are using a two cell versus a four cell, the difference for the other component that you have to get is the value. So what I'm talking about is you will need a resistor. And if you're using a four cell lithium polymer pack, then you need to use a 10 ohm resistor. If you're using a three cell, it would be best to use also a 10 ohm resistor. And if you are using a two cell, you can use a five ohm resistor. Everything else within the circuit is going to be identical except the amount of resistance dependent on the battery pack that you decide to use. Now the next thing that you're going to need is two multimeters. So we have two multimeters set up right here. These are the two multimeters that we have. You're gonna need one to measure voltage. You're gonna need another to measure current. Your multimeter, it is best to have one that has a really good range on the low end of the spectrum, especially for voltage. You need to be able to measure milli volts of voltage there. So that's where we have the one here has a little bit better resolution. It's a little more sensitive to those lower voltages. So this is what I'm going to use to measure voltage. And then on the other hand, to measure current, I'm going to be using something that can get me to at least two decimal points. It would be preferable to get three decimal points out of it, but you know, this is all I have. So I'm going to use what I have. Uh, the next thing that you need is of course your motor, your brushless motor. So that's what we have here. We have a motor that we want to test. What is the resistance within this motor? And and the last item that you will need is all of the alligator clips in order to make your connections. So from there you have two voltmeters, an ammeter, a voltmeter, uh, that's the two. And then you have your brushless motor. You also have a resistor. We're gonna be using a four cell lithium polymer battery pack and our resistor therefore is going to be a 10 ohm resistor. And this is what the resistors look like as you've seen. Uh, so once we have all of those set up, now it comes down to wiring your circuit. So when you want to wire your circuit, you're gonna go ahead and you connect one of your uh, lithium polymer leads, you're going to have, let's say this is our negative lead coming out, you want that to go to your first multimeter. This is going to measure the current within our setup. Once we have the lead going into this, 
we have the positive lead coming out. That positive lead is going to be connected directly to your brushless motor. Now, this is an important point here to make sense of. I have the lead connected to the brushless motor just on the end and I left some room on the other side of the motor connector. We'll talk about that very shortly. From there, you want to grab yet another lead from our brushless motor here, and you want the negative to come out. So you can grab any two of the three leads that come from our brushless motor. From there, you want to go and run that to your power resistor. So here we have it. We ran that one motor lead to our power resistor. Now to complete the circuit, what we're going to do is we're going to connect our positive lithium polymer battery pack lead to our resistor. Now when I do this, I complete the circuit and power is going to then energize throughout the entire circuit. I won't do that yet because one of the last things that we have to talk about is how we're going to measure the voltage. So this is going to be measuring our voltage and then we have to run our leads from our multimeter that measures voltage to our brushless motor. Now this is the critical part that I was talking about before. You don't want to go ahead and connect your volt your voltage measurements directly to another alligator clip. What you want to do instead is attach this clip directly to the motor lead. Therefore, what you have is a two point connection off of that motor lead. You're not stacking up connectors on one another. That is what you want to avoid. It will lead to inaccurate results. What you want to do here instead is go ahead and give yourself two free points on the positive side and do the same thing on the negative side as we've done right here. This way you're measuring voltage directly off of that brushless motor and you're going to have the best results as a result of doing that. Uh, once you have that set up, then go ahead and turn on your multimeters in order to measure the, the current as well as the voltage there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn our multimeter here on the right hand side to our 10 amp setting. So I have to look at it here, make sure I'm setting it to the right one. It's a little different than what I'm used to upside down. So we'll go ahead, flip it over to the amp setting here. And on our other one, we are going to be setting it to DC voltage. This is a little more straightforward. I only have one setting to choose. It is DC voltage. So here, there you go. You have the two multimeters set up. We have the circuit running in one continuous you know, circuit. We're going to go from our battery. We'll just double check the circuit. It's very important to do this because what you want to make sure is that you don't have your motor connected directly to the battery. If you do that, you can certainly fry your motor and possibly yourself as well. Uh, so make sure you make certain that you're connecting your continuous circuit using one of the resistors. Uh, so here we have it. We're going to go and check our circuitry. So we have the negative coming out. The negative goes into the negative on our current meter. And then we have the positive out of our current meter. And that's going to one of the leads on our brushless motor. From the one lead from our brushless motor, we come out on another lead from our brushless motor. And that goes to our power resistor. From our power resistor, this is what we're going to use as our on and off switch. We're going to have our positive lead to the battery completing our circuit for us to test. Uh, so the last thing that we want to check is our voltage meter. Our voltage meter goes in parallel with our brushless motor and we have to make sure it's on a separate point on our connector. So here we verify that we're using a second point on our connector and that looks good, good connection, and we have it on our negative side here, we have a good connection. And one thing to keep in mind is that if you get the order of this, you don't need to have it exactly how I have it here in the video. You can have these switched, it's only gonna give you negative values uh, if you have it reversed. Negative current, negative voltage, it doesn't matter. You're gonna take the absolute values in either case. If you get a negative reading, simply drop the negative reading and you, you can create your yourself a positive reading. Uh, so there you go. Now the next thing to do is to connect it and hook it up so we can power and energize our circuit, take our necessary readings, and then go ahead and use a calculator tool to figure out what the resistance is internal to the circuit. Now before I go and power this up, I want to mention that we only want to power this circuit up for a small period of time. We're going to talk about four seconds. Now the reason is, is because we also have a potential heating that occurs within the windings. As soon as you heat windings up, you change its internal resistance or that, that wire's resistance. We want to make sure that we're only powering it up for the smallest amount of time 
possible so that we are able to keep it as cool as possible. So this is what we're going to do. And then once we have it connected, keep in mind that that power resistor is going to get hot really quickly. So after four seconds, our readings are then able to be taken. We disconnect and then we wait a few seconds before we try it again. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our first reading here. So we go ahead, connect it up. The motor pops a little bit. This one's not too bad. Uh, then we get our current reading. It looks like we're measuring 1.45 amps of current and we have about 0 0.031 uh, volts. Once we have that reading, we take it off. That's, uh, you know, four or five seconds. That's maximum of what we want to have it hooked up for. Now we have our first reading. We should be good from there. Uh, we can take another reading just to make sure that we have it. So I'm checking the power resistor. It is warm already to the touch. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just give it another connection point here. Uh, make sure that we got a good secure connection on our voltage meter. If this if this were to go wrong in any case or any area of this entire analysis of the resistance, it's more than likely going to be your voltage reading. Because what you want to do is make sure you're not adding any resistance when you go ahead and make that connection to the motor. That is the most critical part of this entire analysis is to get that set up correctly. You also want to have you know a nice accurate multimeter taking those readings for you. Uh, so there you go. We waited a few minutes or a few seconds there. Our power resistor, believe it or not, it's already a little cooler. Uh, so what we can do is we can try another four seconds to see if we can get a different reading. We're gonna go and check our second reading here. We're gonna go and attach our lead from the battery pack to our power resistor and it'll stabilize after a couple seconds and it looks like we're getting 0 0.027 volts now on our voltage meter. Uh, so this is more consistent with what I've been reading in the past. So you want to, you know, go ahead and try and get those leads uh, connected as firmly and tightly as you can, making sure you have a very good connection. Otherwise, you're going to have built-in resistance into these connection points when you're taking your voltage reading, and that is going to what that's going to be what's going to lead you to any sort of error within what we're doing here. Now that we have those values, let's head over to the computer. We're going to go and make the calculation to take what we just read and convert that into resistance. Okay, the last part to do here is to go ahead and take the information that we were able to measure and place that onto the radiocontrolinfo.com website in order to calculate our final results. First thing that we do once we're on the Radio Control Info website is we hover over the information tab. We go ahead and hover over the motor efficiency and constants and then we want to click the brushless motor winding resistance. This will land us on a page here where we can perform the necessary calculation. We scroll all the way to the bottom and then we have two inputs that we're going to make and a third one there with temperature and then we can hit the calculate button and determine our overall total resistance for the brushless motor. The voltage that we are going to use is going to be the smallest value that we ended up measuring. We ran a couple trials there in the video and we want to take the least amount and the reason why we want to take the lower amount is we know that the room for air within our experiment, within our analysis, is based on our connection points. If there's any resistance that builds up in those connection points, the voltage that we measure can only go up. Therefore, we want to take our lowest amount of measured voltage. So we go ahead and we apply our 0 0.027 volts that we measured. It may have been negative, but what we can do is we just drop the negative value. It's going to be positive voltage. Then we go ahead and place the current of 1.45 amps into that box. And for temperature within the room, it was somewhere around 23 degrees Celsius. That is important because resistance is dependent on temperature. And we are also heating up the windings within the motor, which would then allow a higher internal resistance and we want to compensate for that. Uh, so if you left your leads on for a little bit longer than four seconds, you may want to push this temperature value up to see if that gets you a more accurate result. Uh, what you can do from here is hit the calculate button and then what it's going to do is it's going to compute the resistance for us within our brushless motor. Uh, so there you have it. You have a total resistance within that winding of 0 0.018. Now that should be true for all three windings or configurations that you can use on your brushless motor and if you were to look at the actual specification of the motor you would see that it comes in as a rated 0 0.016 uh, so relatively close is what we we're able to measure to the specification that was provided uh, there you have it uh, that's all that is required in order to measure and compute the amount of resistance that you have in your brushless motor if you like the video please smash that like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.